Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 69 of the TTV podcast, recorded a day late on June 15th, 2013. I'm Messenek. I'm Butteran. I'm LJ. I'm Keeney. I am MT. Yes, special guest MT Zevor, or I guess just MT, because, yeah. We don't, we don't exist anymore. <laughs> so, We're in hiding. Yeah. LJ, I thought you were skipping out of this recording. Oh, I'm going to drop off halfway through, so. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to find you, and I'm going to smack you. <laughs> oh. um, you're going to try, and you're going to try. And you're gonna we are here to discuss E3 2013, the five different conferences and all the games revealed in between. We like to go over everything. That was my original intent, but like minutes ago, someone pointed out how bad of an idea that was. <laughs> because of I time. think it's a great idea. So all nighter. No, 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 thank you. Nothing but E3 all night. <laughs> three special, six hours long, guys. Yeah. The only right, way to do it do better it. is to actually be there. Let's do it. So I've I've got a list here, and this contains more or less the big games revealed at each conference. And we're gonna do this in a bit of an abnormal order because of certain <laughs> reasons. We don't want to open it off with a long rant against Microsoft, for starters. So we'll get right into it. First thing, EA. This was the second conference of the day on June 10th when this all began. Man, this conference was interesting. Basically, here's some big games that they, they talked about. They opened it up with Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare... <laughs> And I've never played these games before, but this is apparently some sort of radical shift for the series. Has anyone played it before? I've never actually played it per se, but I know it used to be like a 2D kind of thing. I it used to be like it. a weird variant of tower defense. Yeah, it it's, kind it's, of... like, it's like a tower defense sort of thing. Yeah. And now it's third person shooter combat. It's just, yeah. Yes. It's more like, like uh, Sanctum, I think, was that game. It's like a tower yeah. defense 3D FPS. I don't know. I think it's it was like Sanctum. The, the evolution of worms. But yeah, it's more like that now. They opened it up parodying Battlefield, and they like had the music and everything, and then they yeah <laughs> they, really they entered into Plants vs Zombies, and we were all cracking up, laughing like this is what they opened with. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I like that as an opening. Yeah. <laughs> I think it fits. I mean, it's not a huge release, so it doesn't ruin anything later on, but it still looked decently cool. Yeah. I'll agree. They then... It starts you off with low expectations so they can blow your mind halfway through and then disappoint you again by the end of it. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> because then, I forget what they talked about next, but I think they were the ones that covered Need for Speed Rivals, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keeney, what did do you know? Do you know anything about this? I I have not paid attention to Rivals at all. I'm not gonna lie because I'm still playing Most Wanted. Does anyone here so. know about Need for Speed Rivals and what's different? Because I forget. To... I, I can't tell you. I've never really followed Need for Speed. MT. Well, unless I, it's yeah, unless it's Mario really Kart, do. I don't pay attention to racing games. Okay, I'm just looking at this right now. It's basically the all of the Need for Speed games in the last five, six years thrown into one. Really? Yeah, well, because it's taking stuff from uh, Most Wanted, uh, Hot Pursuit 2010, and the Underground titles. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and then there's the fact that Ferraris are actually in the game again. Which... Sounds like the perfect game. It is, <laughs> probably. Maybe. Eventually. It's been confirmed Granted. for current gen, next gen, and PC, so that's worth noting. Yeah. Thank God Black Box isn't making it. Yes. Let's see, they talked about all their different sports titles. The FIFA, the Madden, the UFC. The Madden. Yeah. <laughs> the Madden. The Madden. <laughs> the FIFA, the Madden, the UFC. You sound like an old grandpa trying to describe <laughs> video games. Playing, I was playing <coughs> the FIFA and the, and the Madden. Oh, God. And I put some pictures up on uh, the Facebook. 
And we can't forget the Piggle, guys. The Piggle is important. <laughs> I am. Piggle, too. That's... What is this Piggle nonsense you speak of? Back in my day, we didn't play video games. <laughs> we were outside training for the war. <laughs> it's the war. The war. <laughs> Uh, the war against what? The Covenant? No, not that. Uh, that fantasy nonsense, y'all be, y'all oh, kids. Oh, so you mean the, the, the Taliban? In that, in the Call of Duty, <laughs> I'm talking about the real war. The, the one against the Taliban. The uh, one against the Taliban. <laughs> <laughs> they then teased the return of the Star Wars Battlefront series, so that's pretty cool. Star Wars. Back in my day, all the ladies love Star Wars. <laughs> it's like, she's old, not actually. Uh. See, everyone knew this was coming months ago, or at least anyone intelligent did. Since this is dice, they make Battlefield. Logic would dictate if they're going to hand the Star Wars series off, what better company to pick up the reins? Large-scale battles and whatnot. I think uh, I don't know. Yeah. I kind of figured that kind of EA a was to be fairly a honest. To make it. I don't know. I never, I never would have thought Dice would be making Battlefront until now. They handed the company off to Dice EA, is... and of yeah. all the developers under EA, who is more apt to making a game with large vehicle combat and huge scale fighting scenarios? Yeah, but right. was it ever confirmed they were going to make Battlefront? No, but they were confirmed they were going to make multiple different Star Wars games. And it's like, okay, EA's making a Star Wars game, multiple different ones. Wow, let's see. Of all the series they could make and the developers they have. They probably just that keep sad making Force Unleashed. Title. I suppose. I don't know. See, Battlefront's a very different game from Battlefield, though. Well, it's, well, it is, but it isn't because you still have all of the, like, capture points and the stuff like that. I guess. When, when you look at it, there's still games. I still think it's kind games. of a stretch. It's just that DICE is... It's it's kind of the same idea as Dice making a game like Halo. They're the same kind of game, but, but it's would you just... ever guess that Dice would be making Halo? Yeah, they'd be doing a better job than three for three outsourcing everything. Yeah, yeah probably would pretty much. But didn't they? It is just Dice... one of those things where Dice is into realism, whereas Star Wars is far from it. I think Dice went way out of their way to try and tell everyone that this wasn't going to be like Battlefield. Yeah. They've been doing a lot of yeah, interviews recently because that is obviously the first word they're going to be like, oh, just futuristic Battlefield. No, we're not going to lose track of the series and what made people like it. And blah, 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 blah. PR spin. We'll see. Uh, hmm. They talked about Titanfall, which was announced at the very, very end of Microsoft's conference. And this is like a game which is fusing mech combat with normal FPS gunplay. And that looks pretty cool. Awesome. It looks really awesome. Well, it's made Bruce by the same guys who... I've in a while. Which studio was it that they used to leave and then got kicked out of? Infinity uh, War? Infinity War? Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then they talked about that for a while, kind of retreading stuff from Microsoft's conference. They talked about Battlefield 4, and they showed off, uh, at, like at Microsoft's conference, they showed off the single player, and it was riddled with technical demo, not demos, technical glitches in the demo, and they showed off the campaign. EA's conference had the multiplayer, and they showed off a massive 64-player battle where there were like buildings collapsing, which is a new thing. Entire buildings can go down. Epic combat. Uh, it looks very, very interesting. Water-based combat with boats and whatnot. Well, that's not exactly new. <laughs> well, wasn't in Battlefield 3. Yeah, it was. No, it was. Not in the multiplayer. No, it was. What maps? Yeah, it was. I'd love to play some of these. <laughs> Go uh, ahead, feel free. I can't remember what the map was called, but it's the one where, depending on the game mode, one team spawns on a freaking battleship and takes boats and floating APCs to the mainland. I think you're confusing <laughs> Battlefield 3 for Battlefield 1942. No, it was Battlefield <laughs> 3. I've watched my stepbrother play it enough. <laughs> oh, mess, so it was Battlefield 3. 
Anyway, it's one that everyone wants right, to fly jets cares. on and do the jet. Just rail. because you're wrong, Meso, doesn't mean you can be all all snarky and all. I'm looking this up after this episode. Messinac like. Anyway, they closed out you the just conference. Gotta accept the facts that you're wrong. <laughs> they closed out of the conference by talking about Mirror's Edge 2, quote unquote. And the reason I said quote unquote is because it's come out later that this is not Mirror's Edge 2. It is literally going to be called Mirror's Edge, just like the game from years ago. And it's going to uh, be a reboot. Oh, dear. That's right. That's a reboot good. of a game with one entry. <laughs> Dude, actually, I, I'm not I know lie, someone who's going to be very angry about that. That actually doesn't surprise me, though, because if you look at the trailer or teaser they showed, Faith was getting all her tattoos, yeah. which she had in Mirror's Edge, which means it's a reboot, re reboot, reboot, or a prequel. Yeah, probably the combo of both. It's gonna be open world. <coughs> but it's gonna, gonna be time traveling. Or it's gonna be open world. <laughs> yes. Huh. It seems like the majority. What is it with open world are now E3 open this year? world? All next Dude. World games are heading towards that. Yeah, see, open world is awesome though, so I don't mind that at yeah. all. Well, but that but it, it depends on the game though too because some games just wouldn't work open world. Yeah. Like Mad there Mirror's Edge works games like, you know, the RPG type works, but depending on the game story, open world doesn't usually work that well. Open world Call of Duty. Ha. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> interesting. Call of Duty <laughs> Online, there's your open world Call of Duty. <laughs> Look, they're actually making a Call of Duty online, and I'm actually not surprised it wasn't at A3, because it's Chinese exclusive. Yeah. Really not. But, yeah, it's basically combining all of the Modern Warfare games into one free-to-play Call of Duty, and then like a little bit of Black Ops 1, and they're releasing it for free only in China, and it's driving me bonkers. Mm -hmm. Wait, so what's the difference between it and just regular Call of Duty multiplayer? It's free. It's free. It's <laughs> the world. It's, it's free. It has all of the uh, all, all of the uh, kind of fan servicing maps and guns and features from all of people's favorite Call of Duty games in one, what does making it, pull? it better than all what of them. What does that pull from Modern oh, Warfare okay. 3? Does it have score streaks or kill streaks? I'm not sure. I haven't really investigated it much. I okay. kind of lost any interest when I heard it was Chinese only. But, you know, on the subject of linear and free-roaming games, I hate linear games like Minecraft. I just feel so restricted. Uh, <laughs> that was Minecraft. Okay, uh, that's, a, that's a troll comment. Yes, troll it is. Comment. Yes, it is. I got it. <laughs> I almost took the bait. Nah, I don't really... I don't mind linear games and I, unless they're like... Um, Quick time uh, events. Well, woo! Okay, good example of linear Rise. games. Bionicle the Game or Bionicle Heroes. Yep. Game of the Year. Yeah, <laughs> that is, they are the game of the year. But, I, I mean, I don't mind them. I don't care either which way, but free roam games are definitely cool. Oh, yeah. Except if you're playing with Meso, then he's going, I gotta search for the secret weapons every five <laughs> minutes. I always loot everything. <laughs> Meso is literally the most annoying person. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Next is Ubisoft. And, ma'am, this conference was interesting. Ubisoft, what, what, what did they open with? Freezing. Hashtag Girlwood. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch I'm the intro sure that to you. Person annoyed me. I did not watch the intro I didn't like this to this conference at all. I completely missed the yeah, intro. All I know is I went there five five minutes late because it wouldn't load, and some dude was singing, and I didn't understand the relevance. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a ton of nonsense that I'm really not gonna cover. This is a conference I'm literally gonna hone in on the big games, although. There was so much random stuff going on in this conference, it was hilarious. There was one game that I got to mention that I think was Ubisoft. I'm almost 100% positive. The Mighty Quest for Epic Loot. <laughs> Remember this? <laughs> was, that, was that Ubisoft? I think so. It wasn't Sony or Microsoft, and I doubt it was EA. But you remember it, right? Nope. I don't, yeah, Eld and Bar right, don't because they missed it. But Keeney, MT, do you? I I, I mean I I remember it for it briefly. 
it was like a hack and slash for the PC, wasn't it? Yes. But the odd part came in when they showed the real trailer, and then they showed some stupid behind-the-scenes thing with what I assume was the protagonist talking on and on and making poorly constructed and scripted jokes. That yeah, the 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 rant at the end was or the yes joke session with him at the end was it was, it was like a monologue thing. Yeah. I don't know. It, if it's like I think I think this is what it is, and I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it? It's like where you construct your own thing, and then players get to like try and raid it for stuff. Yeah, it's literally basically like factions Minecraft. That whole concept. Yeah. Build the base, protect against raiders, guard your loot. It seems interesting. I'm not, you know, bad mouth in the game. It looks pretty fun from all reports. It's just, no, it, it, it was a weird it trailer. Interesting, but like, I'm just wondering, like. Do people get infinite tries at getting through your place? Or that is a good question. Like once, because if if people get infinite tries, then pretty much anyone can steal your stuff. Yeah, just eventually. keep throwing yourself at the base till it cracks under pressure. <laughs> that so, right I there mean... is the meso plan. <laughs> <laughs> to keep pummeling the walls of the base with every life, and when you die, just charge back in until they get taken down. <laughs> That's how you raided bases in Minecraft, isn't it, Mesa? Uh, he, he wasn't around when we got raided. Yeah. We'll be releasing a video soon on our channel that I think some people will enjoy relating to that anyway. Back on topic, <laughs> they announced that game. But then some good, so, some uh, more big name games they announced. Rocksmith 2014. Whatever. I assume they have fans. That's a particular series. Uh, Watch Dogs, they showed some gameplay from, which will be coming later yeah, this I, year, I believe. That game looks absolutely fantastic. Um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. This was another from... one completely littered with technical issues and freezing to the point where they literally just had to cut the demo entirely and walk off stage. Which was kind of disappointing because what was shown actually looked really good. Yeah, they were about to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat and then they had to pull it. Which is I just remember joking around with you before the conference started because they were late and saying, watch, they probably put one of their games in to show and it melted the PlayStation. <laughs> and then they started playing Black Flag. Funny story about that, perfect. actually. Hmm. Was uh, I think someone linked it earlier? Was that and Xbox was you know using high-end PCs to show off all their demos? Everyone does that though. That's whereas the PlayStation was using actual PlayStation dev kits. Yeah, that's why the uh, Assassin's Creed demo melted. More than likely, yeah. Well, uh, they usually do stuff like that at E3 though because the dev kits are unstable so it's just easier for them to use a uh, yeah. PC that can run the stuff rather yeah. with similar specs than to use an unstable dev kit in that case I demand all Halo games for the PC now yes please <laughs> there was a rumor they were we, we didn't actually talk about this and I guess I'll save it but um because for Microsoft, but I'm referring to Spartan Assault, we've yet to actually cover the announcement of that in TTV. <laughs> so. Oh, that was announced? I didn't even realize. Yeah, that was... Wait, what do you mean? Well, you know about Spartan it, it Assault? It wasn't... Uh, wait, I thought that... The, was it at E3? It was on no, it wasn't at E3. Okay. It was on the show floor. The show floor. People could play it. Yeah, like... Yeah. Well, it wasn't, like, in a conference. Okay. That's what I thought you meant. Mm. What else? So... Since we were on the subject of the Ubisoft conference, what do you guys think of the tablet going along with the game? What do you mean? Do you mean the stupid smart glass? Yeah, smart glass. Conceptually, well, it's sound, and I would assume that it would have some uses. However, I did not like how in every single conference they had to like try and shoehorn it in. And like, oh, in Dead Rising 3, you can basically cheat and drop like airstrikes on zombies with your phone and like yeah, you can do all stupid. this and watch dogs and you can hack and now see with watch dogs i don't mind because it fits in with the story perfectly yes well watch dogs see th this is what i like watch dogs and the division and even to a point battlefield 4 makes sense because it's not you doing it it's somebody else so say if i don't want to turn on my playstation or my xbox or whatever and one of you guys sends me a message like meso did earlier saying hey 
we need you now. <laughs> and I could just turn on my tablet and be like, okay, here, do, 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 done, leave. <laughs> just like that uh, PlayStation commercial they released right after E3. Uh, They're showing off the um, infrastructure. Yeah. That weird yeah. guy was like, ah, dude, I'm getting my butt kicked in kill zone. I need you now, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the guy was like, I ain't got that, bro. <laughs> 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 wow it was the dumbest no, like, special ever I, I i like how it works in Watch Dogs because you can you know help a random person or sit there and troll your friends it's kind of a game by game basis thing yeah well and then something like the division you get to have your own specific role in it you're not just sitting there with a silly app do clicking buttons you're actually playing around and it's a whole different aspect of the game that you actually get rewards for playing so i hear you i personally think it's pretty cool though just be to be able to sit there and play or contribute to a console game with a tablet yeah i think it's a very good way of kind of melding like games with like technology for today however i wish i had a tablet (laughs) well see i I have a tablet because when i got my phone it, it was an offer with the phone Oh, okay. And All uh, you have to do is add some joysticks to the tablet, and you got a Wii U gamepad. Pretty much, yeah. Or, you know, a Razer Edge or a NVIDIA Shield. Or <laughs> I'd, love if you, I'd love if you could use the Wii U gamepad. It, like, it would register with smart glass. <laughs> but, like, I have my tablet right now, and up till... Net, like just recently the only thing i've ever used it for is nothing and then i started using it to put stories on and write while i'm at school because it's just easier than my laptop yeah that's what that's but, the that's the appeal i've seen of a tablet like that's why i would want one and like i even had went out and got myself a bluetooth keyboard to go along with my tablet but other than that i never used it because it's basically just a bigger version of my phone but if i can actually do something like play a game that isn't silly and, and crappy, very linear scripted or a flash game on my tablet, then I'll use it more. Yeah, I hear you. Because unlike some people who are like, oh, you can do this, 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 and this, I'm like, it's my phone, but bigger. Yeah. And I guess that's a nice no. launch board. I'll go first. The smart smart glass works with phones, right? Not just tablets. Yeah. I think okay. so, yeah. It does. Okay. Cool. Then I, because I do have a, a smartphone, so I guess I could use that. Nice. I mean, I don't. It, it's supposed to. I don't know if it'll work for everything. Yeah, yeah. I would assume it wouldn't work for really older phones. Yeah. Well, and I'm assuming you'd have to have like an Android or something like that. I don't think an iPhone is gonna be. Yeah, smart. it probably wouldn't work for iOS. It might. True. So Ubisoft <laughs> closed out their conference. They like had a a triple threat game selection. What did they do? Um, they uh, the had the crew, the racing game, which from everything I understood is an MMO-ish racer. They yep. had Watch Dogs. They showed the CG trailer for. They had. So I'm reading this list, and I'm reading I'm reading all these games, but I'm getting confused because. They, they they talked about a lot of these games in Sony and Ubisoft interchangeably. So I was saying, oh, the the uh, the, the uh, Assassin's Creed demo crashed. Watch Dogs looked great, but in the actual Ubisoft conference, they just showed CG trailers. So we went from like the crew to Assassin's Creed to Watch Dogs, and they were doing really good, picking up steam. And then they end with a final game, and they open this up, and it's the most convoluted prologue explanation thing i've ever seen in my life they just drone on for like five minutes talking about what if something horrible happened and we had to cope with the uh, the fallout or whatnot and it'd be like day one this would happen and day two this would happen and day three this would happen (laughs) they were talking about some event which happened in real life a long time ago or something oh yeah that that game and they're throwing up all these things on the screen screen. like uh possible possible titles titles. because everyone yeah 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 i can't i kept thinking i can't i couldn't tell what the title was for this game because every like title card looked like it would be the title of the game 
Well, yeah, there was like Operation Blacklight and then yeah, yeah, yeah then the, like... uh, the epidemic or something like that. <laughs> and then on and yeah, on. Yeah, just and like on all these on. kind of things like they were using to describe the game, but I kept thinking it was the title. And I was like, okay, that's the end of the thing. That's a pretty cool title. Nope, Keeps kept going, going on. on. And they do this for like five minutes and then they stop it. And then they go into what I'm going to say are the best graphics I've ever seen in a game. I know that's a broad statement, but I do believe this. These graphics are stunning. And we're blown Which game is this again? The Division. This is the Division. Oh, okay, this is the Division. Okay, and we're good. blown away by this. And then they start playing. And man, this game looks great. It's like an MMO for next gen consoles and I think PC. Maybe you're uh no, not PC. Okay, just no, just, just Xbox One and PS4? Yes, yeah. currently at least. Okay. As of E3. I do gotta say it is definitely the best looking game at E3. Yeah. Yeah. And they have like this like a third really person so shoot. For it. And they've got a ton of interesting unique elements. And it just looks great. Yeah. I think out of everything at Ubisoft, like I was really pumped for Watch Dogs last year, but I think the division's kind of taken that over. What is up with because Ubisoft? Do they are always announce these like surprise games at E3, and they're always so good. Like because they actually know how to. Because Ubisoft E3 is actually yeah, Ubisoft is actually a good developer. Yeah. 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 Well, and and. The part of the draw of the division for me, at least, is that it's a Tom Clancy game. Yes, yes. Tom. See, I've never, I've never been big on Tom Clancy games. Well, I've, I've never been like, ooh, it's Tom Clancy, it must be good. Yeah, but I. I also know that Clancy is good at writing a story, and his games are always like challenging. What, LJ? The I thing is, you hyped one, for the division? Yes. That looks like a fantastic game. And the thing that I really like does. about it the most, I think, isn't like the tablet support or the fancy graphics or anything like that. It's the fact that it's a MMO game that doesn't scale to how well you play. That was one of the main things they said, that if you're, it, it never scales. So if you're really good at the game, you're really good at the game. And if you suck at the game, you suck at the game. But you don't get to like just be better than people because you played it for a long time. Yeah, but it, it doesn't scale though. So like if you have if you're playing with four people, it's not harder than when you're playing by yourself. That's cool. Yeah, which I don't think has been done in an MMO in, in forever, really. Yeah. All right. Well, that's Ubisoft. Next. Let's get it out of the way, Microsoft. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so Microsoft's conference wasn't nearly was as bad not, as I thought. It was not. It was a very solid conference, if not marred by a bunch of very confusing game trailers. But uh game things. Yeah, things <laughs> you can barely call them trailers. But the, the big thing with Microsoft for weeks now, obviously, anyone that knows anything will know there's been a cloud of negativity surrounding them for everything they've done, for their consoles practices. Or, you know, the things specifically that they're doing with it, such as Connect and used games and the DRM and all this, and them themselves being quiet and not releasing a statement until just before E3, stating a bunch of things which were very contradictory to rumors, like, yes, you can turn off the Connect, etc., etc. And everyone's expecting, okay, well, they're going to clarify all this at E3 once and for all and put the nail in the coffin. That was not what happened, but instead what they chose to do was show off games. Because it's a gaming console, then we may as well. And they showed off a staggering amount of games for the thing, as well as a couple for Xbox 360. Problem being, they announced them in such a way, at points it just got so confusing, because they would run trailers for these things, and... They would and then never elaborate. Never elaborate. They would cut directly from trailer to trailer... Very vague trailers giving nothing but the titles and some very odd segments of gameplay. To case in point, this one game sticks out to me. D4. <laughs> I had no clue oh what gosh. that was. Has anyone heard anything about that after the fact? Nope. <laughs> D4. 
There was one, <laughs> What Lies Below. <laughs> that was another one. <laughs> they just yeah, What Lies weird. Below. Information about this game. <laughs> lies <laughs> Below. <laughs> Um, they had the the big ones. Okay, these were the ones they did elaborate on. Killer Instinct, which is a popular fighting game franchise from the past, being reimagined as an Xbox One exclusive with a free-to-play component to it, which is a first for fighting games. Got a lot of controversy oh, yeah. for the awkward <laughs> gameplay. Oh, yeah. There was some controversy. There was even more controversy because IGN reported a false article about the game stating, this is a first for fighting games. What you'll be able to do for this game, and this is what you'll have to do to play it. You get it, it's free, and it comes with one character. And if you want to buy more characters, you can, for a price that we're not going to announce. And there's like, what, 30 characters in the game, and you got you buy what you want, and that's the game. And people were like, but wait a minute, fighting games are notorious, the hook behind them is they're competitive, and you're going to be able to be played in a tournament setting, hopefully, depending on if the people are smart in designing them. That's the whole hook with them. There is a casual community, there's a pretty large one, but fighting games have always been known for their tournaments and their competitive nature. How is this going to work if, one, the Xbox One, it's an exclusive, it has its DRM policies... And, you know, you got what happened to LAN parties, they were always what people did on the Xbox for maximum connectivity, no lag. Then this free-to-play component, how is this all going to work out in the end? Come to find out, IGN made a grievous error. This was not actually the case. They took down their original article and replaced it with a new one saying, yes, you can do all this, or you could just buy the game, like always. No issue. And... This was a major controversy, as it was for like a day or so, that I only heard about recently, but I felt like it was worth mentioning. And yeah. it was funny, they barely talked about the thing. They ran a brief trailer, so of all the games to cause controversy, that would be the one. Uh, Halo. This was big. And this got Halo's teaser was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was so well done. I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, Don't you- a lot of people were like making fun of it, saying, "Why the heck is Master Chief in a cloak when he's got armor or whatever?" He's cosplaying Journey. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I, I would assume sand probably isn't a good thing for a suit of armor. I don't know. Well, didn't oh, no. they confirm that he was like trying to hide from someone at that yeah. point or something? He's in disguise. Yeah, but the, you have to think you're in the middle of a desert. No one else is there. Cloak or not, they're gonna see you, and they're probably gonna know who you are. I suppose, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like sand would have adverse effects on his suit, though. Yeah, that's probably the main reason. But that that's also why I know I, I chatted with, I think it was you, Var, about this earlier, how I was saying that it'd be, it would have been cooler if the cloaked figure hadn't been Master Chief, but had rather been an elite of some kind. Be Arbiter. <laughs> the Arbiter. Oh, well, okay, or... that would be cool. If it was yeah. the Arbiter, that would have been way better. Yeah. Because it all... It also makes more sense because if you look at the Elite's armor, in no iteration of Halo have they ever had their armor cover all of their body. So, unlike the Chief who's like in a full body suit with armor plating, the Elites are like, they'd actually get hurt by sand if they didn't have a cloak of some sort. Yeah. Which is why 90% of the time, fancy Elites in comics and stuff end up having clothing alongside their armor. They revealed three things for this game. Only three. Title's not one of them. It's not Halo 5. I want to stress this. It is not Halo 5. They've confirmed this. Whatever it's going to be called, it may be Halo 5 in spirit. It's not. Yeah, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure it is Halo 5, just not called Halo 5. It's actually the component to go along with the TV show. Ha! Ha! That'd be great. Well, probably. I mean, Halo 4 was a component that went along with Forward on the Dawn. Wouldn't surprise me. There are at least three main bits of info. One, yes, obviously, Xbox One exclusive. Second, 60 frames per second, resounding cheers from everyone over on NeoGAF about this. And then finally, dedicated servers. Even more cheers from everyone on NeoGAF. It was like a triple threat of info, two of which are positive, one of which is like, well, you know, I expected as much. It is certainly going to be interesting. I'm a bit leery. I was initially very hyped, and I still am, because I 
believe it's going to be a better game than Halo 4 by leaps and bounds, not because of the next-gen influence, but because of them heeding the criticisms and whatnot. But I'd be lying if I wasn't a little skeptical, because I was so hyped for Halo 4, and I was like, nothing could go wrong. This game looks great. And then slowly but surely, over the months past launch, it's just gotten worse and worse. See, I think that this... Um, actually, this almost makes me sad to say it, but if anything... If I'm ever going to start trading in games, it's going to be with Halo. And that makes me really sad to say, considering Halo is one of my favorite game franchises. Yeah. But, I mean, you know me, Meso. When Halo 4 was announced and up to its release, I was probably one of the most skeptical here about how well it would do, yep. whether or not it would actually be worth buying or not. Yep. And you slowly turned me to the side of getting hyped for it and then i haven't touched it in like three months just because 343 doesn't know post-launch support nope <laughs> at all no they're uh, they know how to launch something but they could not yeah. take over the reins for reach i gave them a pass for that because it was very difficult i'd imagine jumping in at that late stage but they ruined Reach. Okay, that's fine. Halo 4, give them a shot. Launched great. It was fun. I'm not sure how much it actually has to do with them. Or rather, are overplaying. And then also the stupid Infinity Challenge. Uh, the Infinity Challenge killed Halo. That was definitely the, the, the thing that ruined it. And then everything else, they couldn't bring the life back to it after that. For those that don't know, the Infinity Challenge was a competition they ran for one month. Well, no, actually, I think it was longer. Act. Uh, it was about four and a half weeks. Yeah, probably. And what this was was competition. You play matchmaking. Your points all get added up to leaderboards. You play Spartan Ops. Your points get added up to leaderboards. Actually, not points because they don't have a scoring system. Just the, the missions you complete get added up to leaderboards. And the winner gets a truck. <laughs> and second <laughs> place gets an appearance in the next Halo game as a cameo. The reason this killed Halo was because they didn't make any new playlists and they basically stopped updating the game for one month while this thing was going on. So for weeks there's no new content and then Black Ops 2 comes... It had been out for a while, and they were already feuding for between the population base, who will be the stronger FPS. And then when Halo stopped updating, <clears throat> their population just dropped. And it's very sad. There's numerous charts out there chronicling the population decline. At this point, it's less. That it, it's doing far worse than Reach did after its launch. Yep. Horrible disappointment. But well, I think part of that though. On the one hand, 343 listened to the fans' criticisms way more often than Bungie did. Oh, yeah. That's true. But on the other hand, in a lot of ways, they listened to the wrong criticisms. What? I, uh, I don't know. I think... Well, I mean, let, let, let's look at it for a second, though, because after launch, huge issues that needed to be fixed. Bolt shot, first and foremost. Yeah. And how long did that take them to fix? Forever. Well, See, because they, didn't they were changing anything until after the Infinity Challenge. Yeah. But on the other hand, though, too, like, they would change things that most people were like, okay, whatever. And the MLG crowd was raging about or whatever. And then they would not touch That's anything true. that everyone agreed needed fixing. They made a game like the, that, the for all intents and purposes, is literally... It's, it's very... I, I hate to use this term because it sounds demeaning, but it's very casual. It's a very, very casual game with lots of randomness and power weapon drops and load loadouts and inconsistencies. Yet they decide yeah. to make a game like this and then cater to the MLG competitive crowd. You can't have both unless you design your game to be a perfect mix. Yeah. Anyway, and that's, before we go on... And, and they never even added a... MLG playlist. Before we go on, things... well, I don't know. Throwdown is pretty. Wow. Oh. LJ. To cap this off, because yeah. you're going to be departing soon. 
What do you think of the Xbox One in brief and of the games they announced for it? The games they announced for it looked great, uh, like a lot of them. Uh, Halo 5, you know, I never really had a connection to Halo anyway. It looks good, but I probably will not be playing it because I will not be getting an Xbox One because of all the stacked upon stacked upon stacked cons that I do not find worth jumping through hoops to avoid in order to just play a few games that I could probably just either play on a, a 360 or the PS4. It does not appeal to me in any way, shape, and form, and that's about it. All righty. Well, that case, yeah. I will see yeah. you. Good, sir. Aye, aye. Good Farewell. luck with the rest of the episode, guys. MT, Ciao. they're going to chew you up and spit. No, okay. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Let's see what else. They talked. This was where they debuted Titanfall at the very end. Uh, Battlefield 4 campaign they showed. And. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, <laughs> that, that, that screw up. <laughs> yeah. They opened the conference with Metal Gear Solid 5. That's interesting. I find that a very odd choice because it was an incredibly long winded trailer with a bunch of stupid stuff that was clearly designed to try and be dramatic. Like they would, they they would have yeah. this music playing, and I guess it's cool for Metal Gear Solid fans. They'd probably pick up on a lot of the references and whatnot a lot more. But they started announcing these characters, and they're brand new, I guess. And they announced some characters. There's like a kid, who I don't know his prominence. There's like a uh, someone else, and then they get to this character who I would assume is a villain, and his name is Skullface. <laughs> and this dude, Skullface. he's a guy with a skull face in a suit. And all I have to say is, I didn't agree so to this. So black mask. I didn't. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just black mask. I didn't agree to be in this game. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. got you from the Using my likeness dude. without my permission. <laughs> anyway, it's also cross-platform, so I question their logic in that opening their conference with that. But it's not exactly new. They always do this with COD. It's it's Metal Gear has been, I think. Outside of the newest one, Revengeance, and the 3DS Snake Eater port has been exclusively PlayStation, I believe. That's what I've heard as well. Uh, I haven't bothered to verify. but So it was probably just them trying to, like, draw on people and say, we, hey, we've got this now as well. That makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of a... I feel like it was almost a big slap in the face to Sony, considering Metal, Metal Gear Solid was always... PS3 exclusive, or PS exclusive. Oh, yeah, and then they continued to do this. Another odd game they showed, Sunset Overdrive, made by Insomniac. Is that, is that a game or just like a, a Fanta commercial? <laughs> <laughs> it is a game. And it's made by Insomniac, who I believe, what do they do? They did Jack and Daxter, am I right? Uh, I have no, no. idea. I don't think, no. I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog did Jack and Daxter. Oh, yeah, that's right. What am I thinking of? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're Ratchet and Clank, not Jack and Daxter. Yeah, yeah. And they've yeah. always been pretty PlayStation-centric. So they jumped ship, and they're now making this exclusive, which looks very odd. Oh, let's see. That's all for Microsoft, pretty much. Uh, no, no, you forgot the, uh, what was it? Who, the racing game? Forza? Where the Forza, guy came yeah. on about and Forza, talked about for like, no, I guess he I came on for ten minutes and talked about the beautiful paint and yeah, they brought a the car. leather. They brought an actual car into the conference room to like illustrate and, that look how realistic this looks. And then it's like the most fake looking racing game out of the entire conference. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't think it looked that impressive. Graphically, I can't Graphically, I call it the Halo, Halo 4 syndrome. It, it looks good. Way too shiny. Way too shiny. I don't like that. That's yeah. all for I don't know. I just thought I thought it was bad. But the 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 thing is, is it's funny because oh, yeah, Forza it's is one of the few <laughs> simulation racers left. Yep. There's not a whole lot of simulation racing games. I think really it's like Need for Speed Shift and Forza. Yeah. So they're going for realism and they try to do all this stuff and make it fancy and on and on and on. Whereas 
in an arcade racer like Need for Speed or The Crew or all of the myriad of other games they showed, it doesn't need to be shiny and amazing and realistic. It just needs to look good. So they do that well and don't care about the would the paint chip this way or that way if it hit this this way. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. A couple other things I want to mention before we move on. They announced they're basically going to copy PlayStation Plus and give free games every month. And I'm not complaining by any stretch of the imagination. That's very positive. Even if the games many people have probably already played by now. I mean, let's look at them. They're releasing... Uh, this month it's Fable uh, I haven't 3. played Halo 3 yet. I'm very excited but, for that. Yeah, it's true. You haven't played Halo 3. But th- these are games people bought the Xbox for back in the day. Assassin's Creed 2, Halo 3. Fable 3. Not so much Fable 3. Like, nah, I'd say Fable 3 was a pretty big Xbox game back in the day. Uh, nah. The original Fable was bigger. Yeah. By Fable 3, most Fable fans, except for the really hardcore, were all like, stay away from it. Mm. I know a lot of Fable fans thought Fable 2 was horrible, and then Fable 3 was a little bit better, but still horrible. They're releasing an HD version of the original Fable remastered for 360. Yeah, that'll probably get more than Fable 3. <laughs> Please be perfectly honest. Not remastered version of Minecraft. For oh, yeah, that's right. I got to mention this. One. Xbox One is getting Minecraft. And Minecraft, the it had the one of the worst trailers I've seen for the game ever. It was so badly edited. Like It just kind of made me facepalm. It's like, I love Minecraft, but come on now. That was bad. They could have put together a good trailer. Like, Mojang makes better trailers than that. Yeah. It was awful. It was basically just watching Steve walk around while stupid explosion titles <laughs> followed. And it was just, it was god awful. Now, the improvements so was... they are making are very vague and not elaborated on. I think bigger player counts for servers because the Xbox One can handle stuff like that. And bigger worlds. And that's about it. So, yeah, Minecraft. Woohoo. Rebuy the same thing you've bought twice now. You can't transfer it over? I do not believe so, no. <laughs> that would suck if you can. You can't. I, I, I'm I'm really pr- I have this. a feeling you can. I mean, that, that just seems well, really it's, stupid. If it's on your live account, you should still be able to download it on the new one. It might just not that be as sense. good. That is the one thing that I do wish they would clear up, because I know they say no backwards compatibility. But I think that is partially because of the DRM policy. Yeah. I'm sure the Xbox One could easily play 360 games, considering they redesigned the 360 to release it for another couple yeah. of years. See, what I'm thinking is, because uh, PlayStation's also doing this, and I mentioned it several times, that um, there'll be like an access library or something where they'll have all the uh, Xbox 360 games on the marketplace, and yeah. you'll be able to repurchase them if you want. I think that... Yeah. They'll at least have that, which is good enough for me. I know a lot of people yeah. are going to be upset that they'll have to buy their games again, but honestly, if I can get 360 games on Xbox One, I'll be happy. So, yeah. Well, and I think, too, the nice thing would be is if, say, the game had an online pass or something like that, and you had that, then it would give you the game because yeah. clearly you've bought it. Okay. It'll be something to see. Or, yes. or even, I guess, since Microsoft... The Xbox Live service does have a list of games that you've played. There is always that that list of, hey, you have this game, this game, this game. It could be recently played games in the last month. You know, you put your disc in or whatever, and you can say, hey, I want to download this to my Xbox One. I am going to hit and- this next bit in rapid succession or move this along because of time constraints. Sony... The victors, unanimously. Sony won. Um, They opened with talking about PlayStation 3, given that the send-off, and they actually talked about a good amount of things. They had Batman Arkham Origins, which looks pretty... Pretty good trailer, yeah, that was awesome. The voice actors for Joker and Batman seemed to hold up pretty well from what I heard. I honestly couldn't tell that wasn't Kevin Conroy. It was... Really? I didn't like the Batman actor as much. Of course, I was in a call. 
Okay. Oh, yeah, M MMT. Don't you like all the uh, gameplay they showed in that trailer? Like, it was almost entirely made of gameplay, right? I'm going to slap you. <laughs> yeah. They try to fool people into thinking this is actual gameplay when it's, like, just animations made to look like just, the gameplay. Just pre-rendered fighting. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's pretty good trailer. They Beyond Two Souls, Last of Us, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Last of Us. Oh, Last I really of Us. want you. Yeah, I think it's the only PlayStation game I've ever wanted. You should get it. Oh, I've wanted a lot of PlayStation games. I have a PlayStation, but I never play it, and I tend to not like... I tend to avoid PlayStation games just because it's not that I don't like the PlayStation. I just don't like the games as much, and the controller annoys me when I use it to no end. Infamous me. Never been annoyed by the controller. I understand that it's small, but I've never, I've never understood button placement complaints. It just feels weird to me. But then again, that also could be have something to do with the fact that I never had a PlayStation, ever. Nobody I knew had a PlayStation yeah. until my stepdad moved in, and he's like, yeah, I have a PlayStation. Mm -hmm. So talk about so, PS3, and then they cap it off by saying, that is PS3. Let us announce the PS4 actual console. Finally show this off. And well, they, they showed Vita. Too. Well, no, they didn't. Blah, 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 they blah, started Vita. with Vita. Vita. Nope, nope, blah, blah. Vita, Vita, remote play, a bunch of games they didn't go into detail about. Systems still going to flop in the end. Too little, too late. That is <laughs> Vita. They started their conference with Vita. <laughs> that was a bad thing. Um, the PlayStation 4 console looks like a italicized Xbox One, being completely honest. And I like it quite a lot. I like it because of the sandwich design. I think that's really cool looking. Like and by that I mean like the double layer yeah. box. I, they have yeah. on. I like the controller better cool. than the console, but the console looks pretty nice. See, I don't know. I think the console looks awesome. Console looks great. It reminds me of my laptop, which made me laugh when they brought it out. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks like an Alienware laptop, or it definitely looks like Alienware designed it. It looks really like futuristic, yet really durable at the same time. Yeah. Plates. Like Tumblr from a not not the social network, but the Tumblr from a the Dark Knight. Yeah, Batman. Yeah. PlayStation just was simply dropping bombs with their games. You're not necessarily new announcements, but just game after game after game. I'm just gonna rattle off a couple of names here, and then we can talk about some individually that are interesting. We've got uh, Drive Club. We've got Infamous Second Son. We've got uh, what else did they announce? Kill Zone Shadowfall. We've got they showed Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy, which are not exclusives after all. They showed yeah. a new game, The Order 1886. They showed like a new Mad Max. They showed all just kinds of stuff. It was insane how many games they were talking about. They went over a ton of indie games. Too. Yeah, tons of indie games. Too. A lot of indie games, like almost to the point where it's annoying. A lot of indie yeah. games. Well, that's because Sony's sitting there and saying, "Yeah, we're indie game friendly," because yeah, Microsoft just essentially screwed them all over. Well, Sony used to do the same thing. Yeah, th they did, but they got but now Sony's like. We're going to take some cues from the fact that everybody was pissed off and Microsoft was really, really dumb when they decided to unveil their console a couple months before E3 and smartened up. So let's cover some of these. The Order 1886. I have no clue what it is. Literally, I don't. Looks like, it looks, looks like really vampires cool, but... or werewolves. Yeah, it, it looked really cool, whatever it is. Or is generic It's like zombies. steampunk american colonization thing things a good way to describe it yeah i think that's the only way to describe it um that, that looked pretty cool but odd uh mad max they showed no gameplay but everyone thought it was going to be fallout 4 kill zone shadow fall it looks generic to be completely honest fun not bad graphically a standout but there's nothing about it aside from the graphics that are making me go, wow, this is cool. I got to play this. It looks bland. Of course. There hasn't been a first-person shooter that's really made me want to play it in 
five years maybe. But MT Destiny, which we're getting to. <laughs> Borderlands. Destiny reminded me a lot of Borderlands. I know that that's half the reason that I I think I'm gonna like it so much because it's sci-fi Borderlands. Yeah. Even more than Borderlands, kind of was sci-fi, but kind of wasn't. So. Uh, let's see, Kingdom Hearts three. Var, when you heard this, it's like you lost your mind. <laughs> I wasn't. Who here remembers this? Kenny, were you there? Yes, I'm pretty sure I left the call shortly thereafter. You did. Yeah. I, I've <laughs> been waiting for Kingdom Hearts for so long now. I've been waiting forever. I'm a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. Grew up with Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts is basically the video game version of Bionicle for me. So I was very excited to see that there's going to be a new installment. It's kind of like seeing Bionicles coming back or something. That 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 excitement you would get if you heard that. Yeah, that that that's how I felt when Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced. So wow, it, it was great. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm not really sure if it was gameplay or just, like, a pre-render to look like gameplay at the end there, but that looked really cool, I think, and I hope the game looks like that. I think it was gameplay. Like that. I saw, like, a HUD or, and whatnot. Yeah, I saw a HUD, too, and I'm not sure if they just made it, designed it that way or not. But either way, yep, super excited. They talked about Final Fantasy Versus 13, which I don't know nothing about Final Fantasy. I'll be, I'll be upfront and honest. It, it wasn't like they cha- it was going to be Final yes. Fantasy versus 13. It was going to be versus 13. And this is apparently a game people have been wanting for years. And they run a trailer saying this is what it is. And at the very end, they announced they've renamed the game Final Fantasy 15. And then Ezio was in it or something? I don't know about that. Ezio. <laughs> Ezio. Yeah, yeah, there was an assassin in it in the trailer. Well, they... no, it, it was there was like a guy with a white hood. It was like completely white hood and cloak. And it was like well, the, exactly yeah. the same style as Ezio. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the final splash for the game with all the characters in it, yeah, here, there was let me, definitely let me an assassin. Interesting. I don't know if it was Ezio or Altair or what. How odd. I think so, they even that is bit. weird. I didn't even notice this. Is there like a picture of this I look at? Hold on, uh, give me a second. Here, let me see if I can find one. We'll find right. it first. The race. Uh... And while we talk about while you guys race to find that, let's see, Infamous looks absolutely fantastic. I uh, yeah, Infamous looks amazing. I'm very excited for that as well. Here Infamous is it. probably one of my uh, favorite PS uh, PS3 titles, so I can't wait to see how that works out. Um, I never got to play Infamous two, unfortunately though. Hmm. Really? Although I, I I pretty much know everything that happens. But hmm, that looks a lot like Ezio. Wow. Are you kidding? It's the own Final Fantasy. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> Apparently, it's a costume of some sort. Oh, of course, it is. <laughs> okay, I guess that makes more Wait, sense. No, the the one you linked was one for Final Fantasy thirteen two. Oh well, shut up. I don't. <laughs> wow. That came out like four <laughs> years ago. Uh, you mean Ezio was in Final Fantasy thirteen two as well? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> is Ezio just a recurring character now? I guess Ezio so. is just uh, Ezio is everywhere. Cross, Let's face cross it. Cross game. Jump. I wouldn't be surprised if Halo Five. Spoiler alert: Master Chief is Ezio. <laughs> wow. This. <laughs> well, okay then. I don't even know what to think about that. It's very odd. Yeah. Let's see. Anyway, they talk about a ton of games, and I'm sure I forgot a few, but I'm just gonna keep on going. And then they they get to the end. And they say, okay, well, I think it's time that we talk about stuff. And instantly everyone knew what they were going to be talking about. And they, there was a sharp intake of breath. And everyone was thinking to themselves, this is where it all comes to. Who will win E3? Now is the moment to decide. And then suddenly Sony just starts dropping even more bombs. Like They, they come out and it's hilarious how they did this. There's slides, gigantic slides on the screen, and the guy has the most cocky grin on his face while he's saying, dude, he was so happy. It was hilarious, just, like, how ecstatic he was at the crowd reaction. Like, 
He, yeah. he started saying stuff, and then as soon as the crowd started cheering, he just had the biggest smile on his face. It's like they come out and say, with gigantic slides to support it, the PlayStation 4 will support used games, no restrictions. And the, the, the resounding cheers are just great. And then it's like, okay, well, this is great. This is awesome. They've, they've done this, and this is a great positive point in their favor. This is great. PS4 is doing good. What next? And then the guy like turns around, and he's like, there will be no DRM. <laughs> <laughs> resounding <laughs> cheers yet again yeah dude yeah again. just the crowd have it it was such a great like feeling we'll just everyone was so ex- excited and happy and cheering i replayed it was clip awesome and people literally started chanting sony 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 <laughs> 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 and they were like okay they're doing amazing this is awesome but this has to be it, right? This, this has to be it. There's nothing else they can do. Nope. It gets better. $400. Oh, dude. <laughs> I remember going, as soon as I saw that price, I was like, ah! <laughs> it's, it's $100 cheaper than the one. I will never know how they managed to pull that off. <laughs> They didn't bundle their camera with it. Yeah, they don't. They don't have bundle a camera. They don't bundle but a cable exactly box. It's like two hundred bucks right they, there. They were going exactly. to bundle their camera oh, but thing see, with the thing. It, with so, Sony didn't. products have always been notoriously incredibly expensive. The yeah. fact that it just was cheaper than Xbox it was just amazing. Even I think, if they didn't I think bundle their camera with it. Part of it too was them trying to get rid of that E three O six fail of theirs where they said the PlayStation 3 would be 599 US dollars and there was the giant enemy crabs thing. I think he even made a reference to that at one point. He did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't have yeah. any giant enemy crabs in this presentation or something like that. And then yeah. Well, like, yeah, it, he also they also emphasized how much it was going to be disc based and before gamers. Yeah. Yeah. See so Personally, many people were, che- were cheering. It was just great. Yeah. I, I know why people say Sony won, and in a lot of ways I'll agree that, yeah, they kind of did win, but I just... I'm going to get flack for this later, or I already did. Then gave me a condescending 20 <laughs> minutes of trolling me <laughs> over it. But... <laughs> I, I don't really care about all of the stuff that sony did to win so e3 was pretty evenly matched in my mind it's just that for a lot of other people who actually care about online drm and having their used games and all that stuff it matters for them so it makes sony win and well when i say sony won i don't really necessarily mean that the console is suddenly better than the xbox it's just that the pr like yeah, competition. Sony just annihilated Xbox. Yeah, and every aspect. well, yeah. And it's like well, right I, I, after I, I, that, yeah. right after that, they uh, uploaded a video to their <laughs> channel too. <laughs> I was gonna get into that. Yeah, out of trade. It is the funniest oh, thing. Yeah, they, they use games. Yeah, they used games joke. Yeah. I was just like, I just started clapping this for is them. How like, you train used games on the PlayStation Four? Step one: sharing games. <laughs> Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and see, this this is part of the thing that that annoys me the most. I think with the Xbox One is not the DRM or the used game policy or any of that stuff. What really annoys me is that Microsoft could have avoided all the backlash if they hired people who actually knew what they were doing to be on the PR team. Oh yeah. Because I'm sorry, when your public relations guy makes that face that's been floating around the internet with him holding his hand out to the xbox one and he has the derpiest face imaginable oh yeah you need a new pr team yep it would be also nice if their employees would stop going on twitter and i know criticize for being upset about the internet they criticize you and they do all sorts of stuff and there's so much misinformation. Just yesterday, Xbox support sent out a tweet where they were like, okay, if you get banned on the Xbox One, you lose access to your games. Wait, what? Yes. Yep. They sent out, yep. yep. out a tweet yesterday. If you violate the terms of service and get banned, you're, you can't play any games you bought, and they're all lost. 
And as you can imagine, this was a nightmare for their public relations. And then just today, an interview's come out where a guy at Microsoft denies it and says, no, this is not the case. That was misinformation. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. See this? Of it. <laughs> their yeah. PR team is just god-awful. Well, you know, you know what? No, their PR team is non-existent. They don't even have a PR team. They have one guy who went to E3 and said a bunch of stuff and failed. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's not just that one guy. It's just Microsoft in general. Well, like, they're yeah. going on Twitter and they're just being stupid. Everyone's making these dumb announcements. They don't know. There's like no cooperation with anyone at Microsoft. The thing, thing, the thing that annoys me the most on that front, though, is the fact that all of the people who are saying that, yay, go Sony, Sony one or go Nintendo or whatever. It doesn't matter who the person is. If they're on Microsoft side or they're trying to say, hey, I'm going to get rid of some of this inf misinformation or whatever, they flip out on the Microsoft guy or whoever. Like, I know there was one interview, some, I don't know if it was a web magazine or what. Uh, they did an interview with, what's his name? I can't even remember. Um, Don Matrick? Major. Major Nelson? No, it was Major Nelson. It's Nelson. I don't know. It is Nelson. Yeah. And the comment section, everybody was flipping out. You know, there were comments on it. And I, I actually am sadly quoting this, but Microsoft suck. Wow. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, I know why people are hating on the place or on PlayStation, on the Xbox One and Microsoft, because the PlayStation for a lot of people is just the better, easier, less ridiculous way to go. But on the other hand, I think a lot of people are taking it way too far and not making things any better for themselves in the first place. Yeah. I know the console war is serious stuff, guys, but come on. Nothing's going to get better if you sit there and rage at the guy. The, the thing, true. I don't know. I, I still don't know if it's entirely true or not, but the thing that annoyed me big time was the rumors coming in, uh, and this kind of has to do with Nintendo. Nintendo doing that Best Buy E3 event thing. Oh, can, like, yes. Play their yes, games yes, yes. And, like, supposedly Microsoft employees are going there and trying to sway people to buy the Xbox One instead. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, it's, it's kind of the same deal as what GameStop is doing, where they sit there and some of them apparently are even spreading misinformation and a whole bunch of BS about the Xbox One yeah, so that people will buy the PlayStation. Yeah. MT, instead. I don't think you've heard this. This ties in exactly to what you're saying. Kinda. GameStop, obviously, Microsoft's policies are going to hurt them greatly. So what they're doing is in yeah. certain stores, they're creating these pamphlets and they're giving them to customers who walk in wanting to pre-order the Xbox One and said, you should read that before pre-ordering. And they're, yeah, they're basically trying to talk people out of getting the Xbox One. They're doing massive yeah. subliminal, messaging subliminal messaging by like walking like into a store and having store TVs, having going, TVs with going with PlayStation coverage, coverage and no Xbox, and no One, Xbox footage. One footage. And they've yeah. got certain and apparently too, a couple stores actually had their employees go up to people and tell them that the Xbox One. There were no longer any pre-orders for it, and that they should get a PlayStation or. Wow. A couple guys said that they walked into a GameStop and the guy at the desk, when they asked to pre-order the Xbox One, the guy asked if he, they meant PlayStation 4 and if not to get out. <laughs> wow, really? just go out, get out. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, okay. it's interesting. Well, let's, lastly, what they talked about was Destiny. This game <laughs> looks great. MMO, first-person shooter, creators of Halo, for those that don't know. Oh. And the producers of Call of Duty. Yes, the people <laughs> who made Call of Duty. Uh, don't mention that. They have RPG elements. I'm talking weapon upgrading and customization. They've got skill trees. Three different classes. I think it's... What is it? Warrior, Warlock. Titan. Warlock. Hunter. Oh, Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. Warlocks can use biotics. Uh, biotics really must. That's literally what it is. <laughs> I said, "Oh, no, it's traveler magic, yo, traveler magic." Is that seriously what it's called? That's seriously what it's called. Okay. Anyway, 
It looks Bionics. very fun. <laughs> and that will be coming out for pretty much everything except PC. Current gen consoles, next gen consoles. I don't think it's Wii though. No, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's not it's not, not it's not Wii, and there's a chance, actually a likelihood that it will be out on PC eventually. They should make it for Wii. A Wii MMO that that game would make good use of the touch screen, I think. Maybe. Meh. Let's see. I know Watch Dogs would. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's coming Watch for the Dogs. Wii U. Watch Dogs is coming to Wii U. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know it was. I know. Yeah, Nintendo Direct, and I was like, wow. I was like, wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I was Sony. I was Sony. Oh. Wow. Actually, Meso, I have a quick question for you. What is your quick I know you, at one point, were all for 343 and yeah. funny things. And what, what, what do you guys think about Bungie's... Technical, not really, but kind of, sort of, middle finger to Microsoft and 343. How, how did they do this? I'm speaking of the ghost. The ghost? The ghost. Oh, yeah. That. The blue orb that hums and talks oh. to itself. Oh. I think that's just more of an part. Easter egg and a reference, rather. Well, yeah. it is, but on the other hand, it's also not because Microsoft owns Halo. That was part of the agreement. In order for Bungie to be allowed to leave Microsoft and make Destiny, they had to give up all the rights to Halo. So, yeah. I kind of laughed at it because while it was an Easter egg and a reference and all of that stuff, it was also kind of a vague middle finger to them. I don't know if I would say it's a middle finger. Well... I'd say it's more of a you can't steal our stuff. I guess. I don't know. It seems more like a harmless Easter egg to me, but yeah, that's what I thought as well. Well, well. Okay, that was Sony. Okay, that was Sony. So yeah. finally, the final press conference, or I guess not really a press conference. After this entire day of nonsense, everything was clustered into one day. First Microsoft, then EA, then Ubisoft, then Sony, and. There's just so much stuff going on, and there's console wars. We then have Nintendo running their <laughs> quaint <laughs> their quaint Nintendo Direct quote-unquote conference extremely early in the morning. And this was hyped up for weeks because this is what's gonna be this is what's gonna save the Wii U and pull it back from the pit it's fallen into. Here's what they did. They open up the quote-unquote conference. With Mario. Okay, that's good. Super Mario 3D World. Now, I was initially against this game. And to, a, to a point, I still am. Because it's not what people were hoping for. People wanted a galaxy-ish game, rather than a game that pretty much is a direct sequel to a 3DS game. Which, obviously, cannot take full advantage of the Wii U. You know things except for graphics so really it's kind of a deal let down and the power-ups yeah. not even going to get into it cat suit really it's Dude, quite dumb get hyped. a, pla get a platformer game where you can climb walls and the thing that made me just go wow just wow was at the very end of it when they they're jumping to the flagpole the classic mario challenge and they have the guy miss completely and then climb up the flagpole with the cat suit and get a one-up <laughs> that just made thought, me face fall. Was that not intentional? I think that was intentional, but it's the sad part that it is intentional. Yeah. The funny, the biggest thing to me was that it's just so much like, it's just like a, a 3DS game that's on the Wii U. It looks like they're taking decent advantage of the Wii U hardware. And I fully predict they're going to implement I mean, some interesting things. I'm not the biggest fan of Mario to begin with, but... If anything was going to draw me in, it would have to be like a big open world. I hear you. Thing. And it's so, like, it's legitimately so similar to the 3DS one that IBM's advertisements thought it was a 3DS port. Yeah. It was very confusing because typically when they announce Mario games, unless it's like a 2D one, they usually do try different things. This one, for all intents and purposes, is literally, it's like the Super Mario Galaxy 2 of this year's conference. It looks like the exact same game, made slightly better, 
with a bunch of new features. But for all intents and purposes, it's the same game. No, I'm not buying it. So Here's whatever. what impresses me, though. Literally a week before the conference, we were talking about on TTV, well, you know, they're obviously going to announce a new Mario. But what would we want it to be? And we talked about, well, how about a different story where Princess Peach doesn't get kidnapped? How about new enemies that aren't Bowser and his kids? How's about, you know, a game that tries to do things a little bit differently? Well, boom. I saw like a boss battle that's very reminiscent of Galaxy, and it's not the boss battles we've been we've been accustomed to. Right off the bat, the game's premise is different because you play as Peach. You can play as Peach, at least. And the biggest thing which impressed me was that they're bringing back the original um, designs for the characters all the way back in Super Mario Brothers 2. By which I mean Luigi's got that slightly floaty jump, and then Peach can hover, and Toad can run super fast. And I like that as far as a throwback goes. And a four-player Mario in a 3D atmosphere, that's going to be pretty fun. I cannot deny that. <laughs> I don't know, it impressed me to a degree. The more I look at it, the more I like it. From initial perspectives, I was very annoyed. They go on to talk about Mario Kart. Nothing new at all. Except you can, like, drive on walls, manipulate gravity or something. I'm not entirely sure. It was really odd, but it looks like the same game with better graphics. They talked about the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD remake and no new Legend of Zelda game. Talked about a bunch of obscure hey. games like X, the creators of the hey. Xeno. X, X is, X is going to be good. Xenoblade was a really good game. Man. Yeah, I've heard great things about it's it. It's just... But this one essentially like Xenoblade with Nexus. They talked about the one, so the I, wonderful 101. <laughs> which I think is Pikmin but with superheroes or something. It doesn't look bad but it's a very odd premise. Yeah. They talked about uh, third party support which is actually pretty good. I was I was impressed by the amount of games they're actually getting, even though a lot of them are very obscure. Yeah, the thing that worried me the most about that is that none of those are games that we didn't know were already coming to it before E3. Yeah, I hear you. And I'm worried that support is kind of drying up as <clears throat> time goes on, but you know, as the Wii U continues to struggle sales-wise, you know, no one wants to develop games for it. Yeah. But if the Xbox One starts hurting sales-wise, then, I don't know, that might help it. We'll have to see. Perhaps. Bayonetta 2. Woohoo. It looked pretty impressive. I never played the original, but I know it has quite a large fan base. You <laughs> exclusive. I only ever play the demo. And what do you think? <laughs> It was interesting. <laughs> okay. What else? I think I'm forgetting something before I get into the main controversy and then the finale. Uh, they did Pokemon, didn't they? Oh yeah, that's right, Pokemon. I didn't. I missed this part. Fairy type guys. Fairy type. That's, yeah, that's pretty much all I've heard. That really made a big impact. I didn't actually watch the Pokemon presentation, but yes, fairy type. Get hype. People have been whining in various conversations. It's <coughs> Star! <laughs> has been whining a lot about the fairy type, saying it's the reason that he's not going to buy the game. <laughs> that was, that it's was like, like the great. first... It's the first actual innovation Pokemon's done in like 15 years. I don't so. know, 3D graphics is a bigger innovation than that. Five versus one, guys. Yeah, oh yeah, it's also true, five versus one battles. But anyway, that guy's yeah, Pokemon. I guess I may as well just move on. Big controversy. Retro Studios, the developers of Metroid Prime, have been, like, for months, year, years at this point, I think, they're making a new game. And this game is supposed to be absolutely fantastic, and it's been shrouded in secrecy and hyped up to the point of insanity. And it was finally revealed. And it is... Donkey Kong Country <laughs> Tropical Freeze. 
Oh yeah, gotta get me that Woo. Donkey Kong. Now, to be fair, Donkey Kong Country Returns was critically acclaimed. No, it, it was a great game, definitely. And this game for the Wii U is only going to be better. Yeah. But. But. <laughs> but. Of all the things. Donkey I, Kong. After, yeah, after everything that was hyped up about this game, it was delayed at last year's E3, which kind of ruined Nintendo's E3 conference. And then it, they came out with like this rumor that it was the game that everyone wanted them to make. And then there were like so many different rumors as to whether it was a new IP or a new Metro game or someone on NeoGAF said it was like a star drop into yeah, an old Nintendo IP that no one's heard of before called Star Tropics. And then it turns out to be Donkey Kong, which is it'll still be a great game, but it's like the least ambitious thing they could have done. Especially considering they made the last one. I don't know why yeah, this one like would be so hyped. The game everyone wanted us to make shrouded in a veil of secrecy when it's just a direct sequel that looks for all intents and purposes identical. Yeah. I think we have to remember though the fact that out of all of the you know big 3 console developers Nintendo's always played it safe. That is their thing. That is true. Stick yeah, to the franchise, just milk them till they're dry and then and then beyond. Yeah, beyond. <laughs> they need a new IP. Or they just need to But make, it shows. They need to make use of the IPs they already have that they leave sitting gonna, neglected while they make new Marios every year. I'm going to get my new F-Zero sometime. Someday. <laughs> Someday. I wonder if Captain Falcon will be in Smash Brothers. Which I guess brings me to the next one. Smash Brothers. Yeah, the only game... That I got hyped for. Oh yeah, that game was that game was fantastic. At all. So it already looked pretty good without the inclusion of any of the new characters. Then they debut the villager, who's been <laughs> turned into like the creepiest thing in the world. Even <laughs> after he was meant to be the most so many jokes about the poor villager. innocent character ever. The I will erase you meme. Yeah. I saw one picture where he was like, yeah, I get to be in the new Smash Brothers game. And then they showed a collage of like him reading all the pictures made of him on the internet. And then he said, I never did or said any of those things. <laughs> and Chris <laughs> Collin looked. It was so sad, too. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mega Man got announced. Okay, I'm not even a Mega yeah. Man fan, but that made me hyped when I saw that they like the it, silhouette. Yeah. And then that amazing animation of him fighting everyone, like, chucking the saw blades and, like, cutting Mario's yeah. hat and, like, coins fall out. And then Link deflecting them. That was, that was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. Um, from what I've seen of him so far, he looks like a pretty unique character just because all of his movesets are actually based off, you know, things he does in his game instead of... No melee. No melee. Yeah, it, it's there's like he has his slide attack, and I think that's literally his only melee attack. Yeah. So playing as him is going to be different. And then it's the opposite of Meta Knight. Then there was the announcement later that day, and <laughs> it came up first as a mysterious Nintendo announcement. So everyone was like, "Oh boy, here's the here's the big game that they are going to announce, and it'll say V3." And then it turned out to be another character. And it was the Wii Fit Trainer, who's <laughs> been taken and made, at, if not as creepy as the Villager, almost as creepy as the Villager. <laughs> yeah, it's been growing in popularity over the last couple of days. She looks like, very this, interesting as far as the character there's, goes. There's one picture where it, it's they're like all health related things, and there's like one who's like, "Your ideal heart rate is zero. <laughs> 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 Another one where. She's like, I'll make you fit into a coffin. <laughs> wow. And oh so gosh. she's just the creepiest thing. And it's so like everyone's taking these characters and just making them into these incredibly creepy things. And mm -hmm. so Smash Bros. is going to give me nightmares now. The, the um, titles for the games. They're not Super Smash Brothers 4. It's literally Super Smash think... Brothers for 3DS and Super Smash Brothers for Wii U. I don't think those are going to be their final titles. They've all uh, confirmed they are. Really? Yeah. The subtle, <sighs> the, the subtle in joke they're making is that the Smash Ball 
in the logo has a four on it. So the implication is if you want to call them Super Smash Brothers four, you can. I guess. I mean, what else would you call it? Super Smash Brothers for three DS. <laughs> I'm not typing that out every time. <laughs> Let me abbreviate this. I'm too lazy. S M B. Wait, no. S S B F 3DS. No. Well, uh, Acronyms that are over five letters aren't worth typing out. I'll agree. But yeah, that was E3, Nintendo. In retrospect, I guess they didn't do as bad as I thought they did, but. They still did pretty bad by comparison. <laughs> it was quite a letdown. Their conference, I think people expected a lot more from them. And in comparison to the bitter cutthroat rivalry of Microsoft and Sony dominating the entire conference, theirs seemed like an afterthought, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I wonder why they chose not to come to E3. Was it due to financial constraints or because they knew they didn't have anything to show and they'd just get overshadowed anyway? So they said, why bother making the trip so much expense? I think, I think it was, well, I think they tired of dealing with the press and everything. And then the fact that they didn't have any good games to show at all that were new kind of hurt. I mean, Donkey Kong was the only new game they announced. You're right. right. That is actually pretty terrible. Wow. Yeah, that, that's that's really terrible. Not pretty terrible. Well, they they didn't announce that they um they had already announced X. Yeah, that was uh, announced last E3. What? <laughs> Wait, no, that's not true. Super Mario Three. Well. Technically, no, because they'd already confirmed they were making a Mario game. That was yeah, just elaboration. I mean, they, we didn't, for what it's worth, we didn't actually know that the title was going to be X, but we already knew that it involved... Actually, I don't know. Did we know that or not? I don't know. I don't even know. Okay, I don't remember. We knew that it had something to do with robots and that it was going to be a JRPG like Xenoblade. So yeah, even if we didn't know the title, it was pretty much still announced. Basically... Final thoughts on this year's E3. <laughs> it was shaping up to be one of the most interesting in many years beforehand. Do you think that it lived up to the expectations? And I'm going to go from person to person. First of all, Keeney, what do you think? I think it did. Actually, I, I think it outlived expectations. Or outdid? Outlived? Outdid? Outdid. Because I think everyone was expecting Microsoft's conference to suck yeah and it didn't i think people were expecting sony's conference to just be a string of attacks against microsoft which halfway through it was but it was still good i have no interest in nintendo whatsoever so gotta, it's irrelevant to me but ubisoft and e3 both were great you gotta buy a wii I, I think it was a great e3 you should buy a wii no yes Play so, with dogs. I'm more likely to buy a PS Vita than a Wii U. Wow. How cold. <laughs> How true. How cold. Okay. How true. Var, what do you think? <coughs> I'd buy a PS Vita if it wasn't so expensive. I'd buy a PS oh. Vita if it had good games. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. NVIDIA Shield, guys. Oh. NVIDIA <laughs> Shield. I believe that this E3 was actually really, really spectacular, and I think it'll go down in history as one of the more controversial E3s, I guess. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I feel like with the announcement of a completely new gaming gener or cycle, I guess, it kind of has to be, you know, yep. awesome. Yeah. So, I think it has its ups and downs, though, since it's a next-gen, but yeah. it always do. And there are definitely parts of this E3 that were pretty boring and sucky, but I think there are a lot of all, uh, big, uh, exciting things, too. I mean, we didn't really get a whole lot of incredible games that we're usually, that we used to get, but, like, I mean, like I said, consoles. This is a completely new generation starting up, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. MT, what do you think? I think that, and maybe this is, way too early to call but i think five or so years from now we're gonna look back on this and think that this was 
kind of the defining moment where Sony essentially started their dominance of the eighth generation, at least in the console department. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, Microsoft, I think, had a decent conference. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the way that they presented games, but they at least tried to present games. And I think they did. It was really smart for them to ignore Every, the whole controversy with DRM and used games and stuff, because there's nothing they could have said to make anyone happy unless they said, we're taking it all back. Pretty much. And they weren't going to do that. But then Sony just hammered that point home so hard that they built up a huge lead with everyone. Yeah. And Nintendo kind of self-imploded by not <laughs> announcing anything new besides Donkey Kong. Self-imploded? Yeah. Pretty much. That's kind of redundant, but the point being that Sony's essentially, Sony essentially has a really firm grasp on the console race here, and unless they self-destruct really hard, there's I can't see any way that they're going to lose it. Um, Pretty much. I think we're going to get something like sixth generation, where the PS2 dominated, and the Xbox and the GameCube were fighting for second place, a really, really distant second place. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the PS4 is going to be, you know, maybe 70 percent of the market share, maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. And the Wii U and the Xbox One are going to be battling it out for that 30 percent. I, I would say no way will the Wii U be able to stand the chance against the one. But currently the Wii U has a lot uh, less of a y- negative. Y- <laughs> yeah, I, I think the Wii U won't have any problems surviving with the one being so well, crucial. Okay. Nintendo's... I, I think, though, the thing is, is that Nintendo has never done anything to dispel that image of the yeah. ki- yeah. children's console. Yeah, it's exactly, not, exactly. It's... They're, they've always been kid-friendly. They're always going to yeah. attract... N- Nintendo's always been, like, if you're a hardcore gamer or you like those more controversial, crazy, ridiculous new games, not the console for you, so... Well, right. and it's it's going to survive, but I still don't see it doing near the realm of the Xbox One, regardless of whether or not it's good uh, or not. Because well, the thing is, is that we still haven't seen actual figures. Until the Xbox One comes out, we can't clearly see who wins, because... Well, I think it's kind of clear as far as pre-orders are going. Well, yeah. as far as pre-orders, yeah, but there is also that other... Um, target crowd, that target demographic that Microsoft's trying to reach that isn't already part of the console like you. base. Well, not technically. <laughs> no. Yes. I'm talking all of the new people they're trying to draw in, not people they already have. The issue, yeah, I mean, Microsoft's kind of going for the more casual crowd by making it an entertainment system instead of a purely yeah. gaming system. But the issue is, if you're going for the casual crowd, you can't really make something cost five hundred dollars and expect to pull many yeah. people in. Yeah. That's the big problem for them at this point. And I think Nintendo's base crowd of hardcore gamers combined with the more kid friendly people and the few people who will buy the console just to play the random third party exclusives that they get, like Bayonetta two and Wonderful One on One ends up making probably somewhere around 15% of the console market. So I think they'll legitimately be able to compete with the Xbox One for second place just because Sony will be so far ahead of both of them. Yeah. Why did they have to name um, it Wii U? I still say this. It's it's still a stupid name. Yeah. It's a Actually, there, there was one article I was reading earlier today because I figured, why not? I'm going to check up E3 stuff. Somebody... This this article kind of made me laugh because they were talking about the Wii U and whether or not it would survive in this next generation of consoles. And one of the things, they opened up the article with, Nintendo may not be for hardcore gamers, but yada, 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 a couple sentences later, it's like, but you can trust Nintendo to oh, yeah, do it right, and you can trust Nintendo for this, and you can trust that whenever your buddies come over, the first game you will play will be Mario Kart or Mario Party. I'm like, can you really trust that when your buddies come over, you're going to play Mario Party or Mario Kart? 
I think for a lot of people, it's moved past that because Nintendo has good appeal to its crowd, but its crowd also consists of mainly, at this point, Mario fans and, like, five to ten-year-olds. Yeah, it's it's either children or really, really older people who grew up with yeah, who grew up with Mario and stuff, like yeah. nostalgic crowds. Or Metroid fans who cling on feebly in the hopes that one day they'll be heard. Nostalgic fans. <laughs> oh, Metroid Dude, fans. No, there was there was an article with Retro, and they were talking about why they decided to not make Metroid. And so it turned out that it was like actually an in-studio choice um, to pick Donkey Kong over Metroid. <laughs> and that, that just... Like, maybe they uh, like making Donkey Kong. Maybe, or maybe, they Don- know that maybe Metroid point, anything... just sucks in Donkey Kong's Master Race. Chances him, are they just know him, that at this point, no this, matter what they do, the we'll hate it because <laughs> it's been wanted for so long. That's also tough. No one cares about freaking Samus. I mean, dude, he's a freaking gorilla. <laughs> why can't Metroid crawl? Yeah, why can't Metroid crawl? Uh, that was so funny. Okay, anyway, this has gone and on for far too long. The last, okay. the last thing for E3 was Ace Attorney Dual Destinies was God, there in an interview yeah, with Capcom. And it's now the only game I'm hyped for coming out this year, except for Watch Dogs. Um, Bring on so Ace Attorney. So everyone go buy it so we can, get, we can get more Ace Attorney games in the U.S. Yes, please. Everyone here. That's my shameless advertisement for the day. You guys need to get into Ace Attorney. I do. Very I, need to, I need to get money so I can pay for it, and, which I probably won't be able to now since I'm saving up for PS4. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, it's gone on for far too long. So, <laughs> that being said, I shall end this. Basically, thank you for listening, then. This has been very long winded. And I heavily doubt anyone listened to this all the way through. But if you did. You, really, you get a cookie. You really are a true fan, and I, I salute you. <coughs> We're lucky to have people like you watching our videos. You're true. <laughs> we'll send you a postcard. Thank you from TTV. Yes. With all our addresses. We get BioCraft for free, just like everybody else. <laughs> so if you listened up to this point, type in the chat, dedication, and I will recognize <laughs> you. Thank you for listening. It's been fun. This was episode 69 of the TTV podcast. I'm too tired to do my usual spiel, so, you know, you know what to do. <laughs> I'm Messinet. And I'm Vardaran. I'm Teeny. I am MT. Yes. Who are you? Sing. <laughs> I am the disappointed Metroid fan who will never get the next Metroid game. Like me. <laughs> Nintendo hates Metroid. See y'all next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.